put a torque wrench on it, which is easy to do yourself. So William and I changed oil for the first time together, which is fun. Anyway, I had to cancel the film guy because it just didn't make sense. If he's coming down Saturday, we got a bunch of projects. We're going to film an episode on the tool changer, on city work offsets. We've got a, a new soft jaw project in mind. Uh, another lathe video coming up. Actually, it's probably two lathe videos. So there's a lot on uh, a lot on tap. We'll fast forward through the rest of this cleanup, though. Be right back. Not bad, right folks? You can improve it, especially for production, if you added a few dowel pins, that would help both locate your X and Y and repeat, uh, repeat that location, but also would help with, uh, with clamping. But seriously, look at that folks, not bad at all for a quick job. Let's keep right on going. All right, here we go. And you saw I've got some Sharpie marks on this. <laughs> Little parts like this where two of the dimensions are the same or all three are almost the same. That can be a nightmare because we've got to cut a different, you know, uh, position. So I sharpie out the rough outline so that when we do it, we don't goof. Because there's nothing worse than, you know, being almost done with a project and realizing you had a part in the wrong inverted or upside down or something, something stupid like that. So we're, this is our pre-drill tap for a half 13, which is a 2964. We're going to widen out some clearance here with tool 31. And then what we're going to do is go take a quick look at the um, coordinates and path pilot that'll let us recenter our XYZ, and we're just going to manually tap this thing half 13 real quick. As I was mentioning, you can manipulate path pilot while the program is running, which is great, changing the view. To double click expands the G code, and if we do that, and we go up here and look at the uh, drill cycle, we can see it goes to X605. Y negative 625. So let's just go ahead and do that. G01. I'm hugging the camera as I type, sorry. X point 605. Y negative point 621. Just make sure there's no Z in there. That's the thing I always try to make sure. 30 is fine. And boom, we're right there centered. Let's go back and tap this. The only thing I don't like about that is I have to, um, I'm using the polarizing filter. So thank you for everyone for the tip on that. But I have to take it off. I have to take it off when I film the screen uh, with the camera because otherwise it's way too dark. So preload that guy, a little bit of coolant on there, just like so. <laughs> You're supposed to stop and back it up, but sometimes I get a little aggressive. Feels like we're through. Yep, usually I plunge down, which I should do just to set a good example. Because even when you're down there, it can help to keep it on track. That feels good. Back it up. <laughs> okay, now it feels like we're out of the way. Or close. Perfect. It's actually some nice threads. It's look pretty good. All right, so machining the sight portion now. This is that rough and water line. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Hey, holy cow, folks, Woo! look at that fit. That is awesome. God, I love this. I should have said I modeled this up from scratch, so I didn't know if that would have worked, but. Woo! 
Ooh, look at that. Sweet. I feel like this is gonna work. All right, cutting that uh, relief pocket that'll mate into the block we cut a minute ago. And then we should put this thing together and see what we got. I forgot to mention one of the other things we're gonna be filming uh, this Saturday when the video guy's down to help is we're gonna do like a 4140 push it to the max test, which I'm really excited about. Carl from Lakeshore Carbide sent a bunch of tools over. We're, we're gonna dive into some hardcore, for me hardcore, speeds and feeds, and actually look at the chip load and serve speed per minute, material removal rate, but it, um, I thought of it because I was machining some 4140 the other day at 2100, uh, RPM seven inches a minute, um, 0.1 inch width of cut, 0.25 inch depth of cut, which is a quarter inch, four foot end though. Sorry, that sounds like a lot. And it was a beautiful cut. It didn't sound like, you couldn't even hear it and the chips were coming off with heat in the chip. It was just, it made me so excited. So I'm really excited to film that. Uh, I think we're actually already done. Awesome. I'm going to uh, see you guys over at the bench. Let's go play with this thing. I bet you thought uh, I forgot to drill and tap these, and if you did, you were correct. So, uh, real quick, I actually already did the other side off camera. Jared's actually TIG welding right now on a, another job, so uh, I figured I'd have him hold off for just a second as the um, wonderful lights and AC buzz and all that is, uh, well, well, that's a whole other story. Anyway, this will be quick work. Half inch through hole, and then number four. Drill, and then we will tap quarter 20. I should shorten up those packs. I always didn't because it seemed like it'd take more time, but man, avoiding those bird's nests is, is huge. And now, finally, last but certainly not least, we shall tap. I uh, love it. Boom. So here's the piece of half inch 13 rod we had laying around. So to drill the holes in it, I actually do want to be mindful of how, how we do that. So we were already uh, Y0 on the back of the vise. So I just came down. Half, uh, 0.25 and set Z0. So we're in the center of this rod and we're just going to pick a distance like right here, relatively arbitrary. And we've got tool 25 in here and we're just going to go ahead and turn the spindle on at uh, 1500 and just go ahead and slowly plunge down and set our uh, pilot hole. And then what we'll do is we're going to just jog over and we want to come over a about 3.1 inches. That should give us enough um, for clearance with the washer that we're going to use. Actually, I'm going to cover just a hair more. Um, actually, no, we don't need to because we're going to drill a hole that's slightly larger than um, than the uh, cotter pin we're going to use. I'll just plunge a little bit slower than I just did there. Okay, now throw in a 1 8 inch twist. And this I should run at about 2000. I just looked it up in G-Wizard. Definitely want the coin on here. And about three inches a minute. <laughs> Make sure the parallel is not there. I'm just manually pecking here with the uh, keyboard, actually. Okay, and then just come back to the uh, X0. And same thing. Just like so. Alright, here are all of the parts. Let's put it together and see what exactly she does.
Okay, she's assembled. I should have mentioned I had Jared weld a little a half inch 13 bolt on the end. Did a nice job. That'll be our torque uh, way to put some torque through this. Now, I'll admit one sort of weakness in the design is that I'm using these um, quarter 20 steel screws to hold the slide in place and you want to obviously not damage your slide. So I've got a couple of aluminum shims. So let's change the camera angle up here, get this thing set up in a vise and uh, see if she works. Okay, so here she is in a vise. You guys obviously I think get how it works. There's obviously also a huge amount of backlash because of the nature of the nut, but that shouldn't actually matter. Uh, I don't think, at least that'll be why it doesn't work if it doesn't work. So I'm gonna take the slide. And I'm just gonna start the thing on by hand, which it happened to do. I don't know if they all do or not. And then kind of working through the camera here, but um, I should be able to move this over and get it kind of lined up. Loosen these up a little. Give myself some wiggle room. Oh, I see, I've got a problem with the front of my vise. One second. Sorry about that, the front of the slide was getting caught on the, uh, the jaw. So now it slides in. Perfect. Now, let me use those little shims. It'll kind of balance if you do it like so. Sorry about the hand. Okay. 7 sixteenths wrench on just one of them ought to tighten it down. Now you do want to make sure that the um, slide is level to the thing as you're pushing this sight in. Um, <laughs> hold on. Are you serious? Oh, folks. Well, hold on. Maybe I spoke too soon or maybe it's just snug to where you can't do it by hand. I expected to have to use a wrench. Now, I, you know, I, part of me really wanted to do this um, off camera first to make sure it worked, um, but I just thought, you know what, um, it'll, I won't be able to fib, not that I would, and show it a second time, and I'm just trying to look, I, you know, I know it's going to be snug, I've put in sights before, so I definitely am, um, I'm a little bit too um, tall on this this part here, it's actually cutting into the top of that slide a little. So I'm gonna take a look. I'm probably gonna go machine this down just a few thou. Be right back. Okay, I machined this face down about eight thou, and then I actually just ran a deburring tool too along that edge. Let's put her back together and see how she works now. Okay, we're back in action. One of the things I did just realize though when I put it back together is you do need to make sure that the slide remains um, straight and the um, relative to the dovetail, or perpendicular rather. And I, you know, the two set screws could, uh, it looks straight to me, but that's a chance that they aren't, aren't perfect. Anyway, um, I like the fact that you can so easily take the uh, slide out even if you're part way on with the tool to take a look and so forth. So now let's, uh, let's tighten her up here. And <laughs> I've got a problem. I'm, I was going to make an excuse of, of why it was no big deal to use these little cotter pins, um, but need to get bigger ones. I'll be right back. All right, I, I get cotter pins, hitch pins, all those line terms confused, but these, um, other, than, other than hitting that bolt head sometimes, well, they should do the trick. Um, for now, so let's see here. We're trying to go this way. Let's see what happens. It'll actually be cool to watch this on video because it's hard to see and watch in this from this perspective. Um, certainly looks like it's going on. I will admit I'm a little surprised at how much force it's taking, um, but it's okay. Someone else who, uh, I'm sure someone who's watching this is, you know, a Glock armorer or has done this before. I'm curious um, how hard these are to put on. It's, it's going. You'd feel if it were, if it were binding, um, again, I've, I've replaced a number of front and rear sights on my 1911s and 2011s, um, which is a bit of a different process than this. Um, 
There we go. I am pretty sorry. Um, I get distracted in the um, in the weeds here, but folks, holy cow! Look at this. Um, this is awesome. Now I'm gonna have to look through the camera to uh, try to align it, or just learn to compensate for right or left. Um, Yeah, well, it'll be easy to tweak it. Let's pull it out and take a look. Oh man, didn't even notice. It's really putting a, a hurt on that um, hitch pin over there. Um, folks, look at that. It needs to go a little bit more to the left, which I'll take care of offline but that is awesome. It did scuff the top a little bit when I was, before I trimmed it down, but no damage at all to the uh, Trigicon night sights. Awesome, 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 awesome. So folks, how awesome is that? Like seriously, didn't take that long at all. You guys, if you own a Tormach or a CNC mill, you can do this. Uh, I'm not sandbagging. I honestly thought there would be some hiccup in this problem. I thought there would be you know, like some tolerance issues but kind of like what we saw when we actually were scraping the bottom. I just, I just thought that, you know, like I thought maybe the slide would twist or rotate up. Um, but really, actually, not, not at all. The, the biggest surprise, and it's fun. When you do things like this, the, the projects kind of tell their own story. And the, my surprise was, I can't believe how much uh, force you're putting on this pin right here. Easy fix to get a, a roll pin or something, a dowel pin that I'll uh, press through there and it'll be in there uh, much better. But um, that's, that's no big deal at all. It also is pretty cool to see how much torque uh, or pressure you can transfer through a, a, a regular old um, threaded fastener. So uh, yeah, how about that folks? DIY Glock Sight Pusher. Um, be good, it'll be a good fit for us since we're now a Trigicon dealer and we're selling RMRs and I think we'll do a lot more of the sights as well. So as always folks, I appreciate the enthusiasm, the thumbs up, the likes, the shares, and the comments. Hope you guys have enjoyed that. Take care, see you soon.